they that wait upon the Lord. Most of you here are aware that God wants to use you. You will wait until when you check your head in the mirror, you now see white hair everywhere. Your hair will be gray. You, will, you, you may have told everybody you are an apostle to the nations, you are a prophet. It's when you become 70 years that you will discover that no, you don't become a prophet because God told you that. You become a prophet because you master the art of waiting. Because an angel can appear to you and say, Shadrach, you are going to the nations of the world. And then you go and tell all your friends, we be the nations of the world. And then you neglect the act of waiting. The next time we check you out, you will be 75 years. They that wait upon the Lord. I've heard a lot of messages. The problem is that you have not practiced them. That's why I told you we will pray this morning. Because a Lord don't understand what waiting means. The thing is just to come to God and wah, 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 wah. waiting upon the Lord is first of all a realization that you are a mortal man and in you is no value. So you come to lay yourself on the sacri- on the altar of sacrifice because you have evaluated yourself. You discover that if it is based on yourself and all you have, you can't amount to anything. So you came to God to receive an exchange. So waiting upon the Lord is the most desperate spiritual spot. A man coming and holding on to the horn of the altar and saying, I will not go until you exchange my weakness for your strength. That kind of prayer is not a prayer you pray in the heart. It's not a prayer you pray absent mindedly. You will be there until your weaknesses are literally exchanged. The prayer doesn't end until you see God in yourself. It's just like the blacksmith that works on the silver. He will keep pulling that silver until he can see his image in that silver. The job has not ended. So you will see him tending the fire, tending the fire. So you may begin. It doesn't stop after 30 minutes. You will do it until you sense an energy. You know you have migrated. And then that point comes when the next time you open your eyes, you thought you were walking like this. But the next time you open your eyes, you are at the end of that door there. You know you are no longer your physical geography. You have migrated. Pato, pato, pato. The problem you were praying for, you will ascend until you can't remember there was a problem. That's where you can come down. Somebody say, I woke up yesterday, God said I should bring this to you. And then he hands you money and it's exactly your house rent. Men who don't wait, don't say one that. When you tell them about the supernatural, like the story. That's why you come from me to say, Ah, God is touching somebody. Then they are looking. They want to see how God touched you. He's story to them. You say, An angel of the Lord is here. Some they are hearing for the first time. Some people still see angels. They will tell you. Do people still see angels? Are you sure it's not a lie? Or when a liar, a liar. Is you are far from the civilization of heaven. You are on earth. You are actually on earth. The things you call impossibility, there are men that are working in it every day of their lives. And the reason is not because they are special. The reason is because they have mastered the art of waiting. That's why when you go to wait, the first thing that fights you are the things that your soul is connected to in time. Because waiting is actually detachment from time and connecting to eternity. It's a place where you stay or you break into the God soul. If you have not broken into the God's soul, you have not waited. Maybe you went to speak in tongues. And you can still speak in tongues and fornicate. Maybe you went to speak in tongues and you can still speak in tongues and be afraid. But if you stay there until you detach from this realm and enter the God's soul, from the spirit of fornication itself, we know there is no place to dwell. It will vanish. Isaiah was prophesying and was enjoying himself. But his mouth was full of wounds. He didn't know. He was operating by the gift and the, the anointing. But when he decided to do serious business and he broke into the God's soul and he encountered God, the first thing that put to him was that he carried the bow and got the stone. When the man enters the God's soul, his weaknesses are swallowed up. So every time you check your life and there is still a weakness, know that you are not living from the plane of the God's soul. 
it is possible to establish eating in your bedroom. And if you don't enter the God zone, your purpose will never be fulfilled. Because purpose was not designed to be fulfilled on earth. Purpose was designed to be fulfilled in Eden. So if you don't know how to carry Eden everywhere you go, you will struggle in this world and you will never fulfill purpose. That's why Jesus, the Bible said, he was on earth. But walking in Nazareth, the Bible said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That's what Jesus said about himself. So everywhere Jesus went, he carried the atmosphere of heaven. So when he speaks, is the possibilities of heaven that takes place. We don't understand the powers of waiting. Every time a man builds the culture of waiting, what he does is that he builds a radar around himself. He walks on that open heaven. And that is why when he speaks, heaven is on. Because even though he's walking on earth, he's actually standing in heaven. Elijah, he, had, he was standing in the palace, but then before God, who might stand? So the secret of wonder is where you are standing in the spirit and when you are standing is determined by the quality of your waiting a man who cannot wait this is why you see a lot of people not fulfilling purpose god has spoken to them they've had encounters angels have appeared to them but it never manifests because what they don't know is that the realm where that encounter came from they must carry it every day of their life in order to be able to manifest the possibilities of that encounter Christians don't wait, so they depart from Eden. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. I was telling you this morning. I said, when Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, he was not talking to all believers. You saw him speaking to everybody, but he was actually talking to the believers that will subject themselves to the way of prayer. Because when we run through the whole scripture, the only way the earth is preserved is by prayer. <laughs> this is why the Bible will say, By his stripes you are healed, but not all believers are healed. The guy that is healed or works in divine health is the guy that subjects himself to understand the economy of healing. So that scripture is for the man that we understand the economy. It seems as if he's spoken to everybody, but not everybody experiences it. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. All of us have the Holy Ghost. How many people are manifesting power? There's a protocol of power. So when he says you shall receive power, he's talking to the man that will subject himself to the protocol of power. Because God speaks the laws of the realm we validate it. You are the sort of the earth. You check the whole scripture. And every generation that the earth was preserved, it was preserved from the incense that rose from the altars of men of prayer. Adam and his wife were driven from the garden. And after they left the garden of Eden, they were still in Eden, but they had gone out of the ambience of God in the garden. And they began to raise children. And evil entered their camp. And came slow and bare. And God brought the judgment upon Cain, and Cain went and built another city on the east side of Eden, the city of Lord. And there was no hope for the earth anymore, because evil was growing. Until a man killed, and he said, If Abel will be avenged sevenfold, he will be avenged seventy and sevenfold. Because his faith around the world, evil was raving in the world. There was no possibility for the purpose of God to find expression anymore. And in Genesis chapter 4, the Bible said, God came unto Adam, set in the place of Abel that came to And he says, Set gave birth to Enos. And he said, From there did men begin to call on the name of the Lord. That was when salvation came back to this world. God was in heaven. Adam was now giving birth, but there was no intervention from heaven on what men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That was how men like Enoch were born. The earth plundered into darkness again. And the Bible said, God said, My soul will not continually strive with men. And God sentenced earth to judgment to be destroyed. And then suddenly, we heard again in Genesis chapter 6, He said, And Noah found favor with God. Noah became the preserver of the earth. 
you will think Noah was just trolling and he found favor. It was when Noah came out from the ark in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 that we knew what Noah did to find favor. He was the man of the altar. The Bible said when he came out, he erected an altar to the Lord and there he sacrificed all the clean beasts. So it was Noah's intercession that brought him to the place of favor. And if Noah was not an intercessor, the earth would have crumbled. Because God can destroy this earth and start again. He told Moses, I will, I will, everybody, I will destroy all of them in Exodus 32. Because he is suffering. So the earth was preserved by a sword called Noah. And the reason Noah was able to preserve this earth, because he was a man of us. The earth plunged into darkness again, and Nimrod rose and began to build the Tower of Babel. And God scattered the language of humankind and set them apart. There was no purpose because there was no way man could come together to formulate any purpose anymore until a man would speak from the halls of the Chaldees by the name Abraham. When Abraham entered the promised land, then Abraham again we saw in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 6 that Abraham built an altar to the God that appeared to him. So Abraham was also a man of the altar. When God says you are the salt of the earth, he is talking about the intercessors, not just the believers. A man who cannot pray, have no business with preserving the earth well. He doesn't even know how the earth works. Because the earth is manipulated by thrones in the spirit. And until you journey in the path of intercession, you cannot make contact with thrones. When we preach, we save schools. But when we pray, we go beyond saving souls. We save the earth. That's why in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, he said, my people who are called by the name, we humble themselves and pray. I, I will hear them from heaven and I will come down and I will heal their land. The creation that is in bondage, when men of prayer lies, they begin to deliver creation. That's why I say intercession is superior to preaching. Intercession does not only save souls, he saves the whole of creation. Did you not notice that men like Shetrach, Mishak, and Abednego, men of prayer, when they were cast into fire, suddenly fire lost the ability to burn. Because in eternity, fire is not supposed to burn. Fire is supposed to purify. It's only in hell that fire burns. So when you touch fire on head and fire burn, it's because earth, for, earth is now a prototype of Hades. For this man, because of prayer, they have the ability to bring the protocol of creation back to the original design. So even when they were cast into fire, fire could not burn them. It only purified them. Because the role of fire in heaven is to purify. That's why the throne of God dwells in the midst of the coals of fire and the seraphim that are the beams of holiness. They touched the tongue of a prophet and he was purified. The preservers of the earth are the intercessors among men. Daniel was cast into the lion's den. According to the mutilated protocol of earth, lions now devour men as food. But when Daniel entered the lion's den, because he came with an atmosphere of Eden, the lion became pets. Because when the new Jerusalem is restored, the lion will eat grass with the, with the sheep. They restore creation. Men of prayer are the source of the earth. Any people who doesn't pray, that portion of prophecy does not include him. You may think it's something you will argue. You cannot manipulate the powers of creation unless you look deep with the truths that make the powers that be. Daniel in Babylon, everybody had fallen because they were manipulated by a prince of Persia. Only Daniel, Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego were standing. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 10 that every day he prayed three times as his custom was. Yeah. The reason Israel had hope for coming out of Babylon was because there was a sword in that personality called Daniel. Every time his incense rose to heaven, he gave God authority to manipulate creation again. Because spirits cannot intervene in the affairs of creation unless human entities partner with them. That's why they wanted to destroy Jericho. The angel of the Lord had come. His sword was drawn out, but he could not do anything. 
the word of the Lord had already been given. We could not do anything. All the angel intercessor was moving around and surveying the land. And he saw the angel of the Lord. And the guy said, No, I didn't come for you. I came according to the word of the Lord, but there's no human partnership. The moment Joshua partnered with him, the powers of heaven began to move. And he got the strategy to destroy Jericho. Jericho sank because a man knew how to preserve the heritage of God on the earth. The reason it looks as if darkness is growing is because there are no waiters anymore. The intercessors, the number of intercessors are depleting. The earth is losing potency because the number of intercessors are depleting. Meanwhile, sorcerers are increasing every day. Every day they are increasing. But the intercessors, we have many preachers. They gather three messages from the best preachers and they coin out their own message and they come to preach. But they cannot touch any true in the territory. Only men of prayer can move the principality so that the heavens can open. The sons of the earth are the waiters with the throne of God. The whole Gentile community was doomed, even though the cross paid for the Gentiles. There was no access point for God to reach the Gentiles. But the sword appeared and he said, your prayers and your hands giving have risen up to heaven as a memorial. On account of that, salvation came. There is no preservation for the earth unless men pray alive again. Prayer is deeper than asking God for bread and wine. It's a strategy of God for keeping His purpose within the borderline of human existence so that that which is in heaven they became champions. They that wait upon the Lord. Most of you here are aware that God wants to use you. You will wait until when you check your head in the mirror, you now see white hair everywhere. Your hair will be gray. Then you will go and calm down. You, will, you, you may have told everybody you are an apostle to the nations. You are a prophet. It's when you become 70 years that you will discover that no, you don't become a prophet because God told you right. You become a prophet because you master the art of waiting. Because an angel can appear to you now and say, Shadrach, you are going to the nations of the world. And then you go and tell all your friends, we be the nations of the world. And then you 